Hey friends, good Tuesday evening to you all. It is January 6, 2026. In this weather forecast, we're going to be updating you on the latest winter weather information, including a couple of winter storms that will bring heavy snow, heavy rain, and a severe weather side to the weather forecast over the next couple of weeks. And looking at the long range as we head into late January and looking at the outlook for temperatures and precipitation towards the end of the video. If you like my weather forecast, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are almost to 144,000 subscribers. If you want to help me get there, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get into the forecast. Let's look here at what we have going on this evening. We do have some snow and blue up here into the Great Lakes and New England. A little bit of some rain here in green across portions of the Northeast where the temperatures at the surface are pretty warm. And then we have another storm system here across the Pacific Northwest, obviously in blue that is snowfall. That is encompassing areas of the Cascades, especially in Washington State, but also northern Oregon and then portions of the Rockies in northern Idaho and western Montana. And then you barely see it. You blink and you miss it here offshore of the west coast of California. Another low pressure system developing with rain offshore there this evening. Let's go through the night and you can see as our temperatures cool, we're going to start to see more snowflakes flying across the northeast, especially into New England from Lake Erie up there in the northwest Pennsylvania, western and upstate New York, especially over here in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, including down east Maine. Coastal areas may see some more drizzle and rain shower activity as the warmer water from the Atlantic will keep our areas near the coast pretty warm, so that will be all rain. In the Pacific Northwest, some colder air from western Canada will come down and bring some higher elevation snow here to, again, areas of Washington State and Oregon and the Cascades and the Rockies and Idaho and Montana, even northwestern Wyoming seeing some of that. Maybe some drizzle showery activity in Southern California, but especially the Baja of Mexico, or Baja of California that should be in Mexico, that's where we're going to be seeing some rainfall there going into Wednesday morning. Speaking of Wednesday, we do have a threat for severe weather here on Wednesday, January 7th. This is tomorrow from the OKC Metro down here to just west of DFW toward Wichita Falls and Abilene. Then as we go into Thursday, much larger area of a marginal risk of severe weather now extending up into the Missouri Ozarks there, including Jefferson City, Joplin, and into St. Louis, Southern Illinois, also Little Rock there, Jonesboro, Fayetteville, and also Fort Smith, Memphis in Western Tennessee, uh, Shreveport. Port and Monroe in Louisiana there, again, eastern Oklahoma, the McAllister area, and then extending down the I-35 corridor in east to northeast Texas, Texarkana into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Tyler, Texas, College Station on Thursday, and then as we go into Friday, there's a slight risk of severe weather. This would be a two out of five on Friday. This looks to be the best setup for severe weather of the week. This will include areas, again, from western Tennessee, Jackson, Clarksville, down into Memphis, and then into Jackson, Mississippi. Tupelo and Greenville, all the way into the Pine Bluffs area there in Arkansas, Monroe, and also in the Baton Rouge area in Louisiana, the Bayou there of Louisiana, and the northwestern portions there of Alabama, just west of Huntsville and Florence, keeping an eye on that for Friday. So let's look here at our storm system for Wednesday. All that energy out here across the Pacific Northwest is going to be diving down here to the south and east. There's our low pressure by Thursday morning at daybreak at 7 a.m. We got a 995 millibar low there in southwestern Kansas. This is going to be tracking up by Thursday evening into eastern Iowa and northwest Illinois. Is a 995, 996 millibar low, and that'll cross Lake Michigan into lower Michigan by th Friday morning. And then by Friday afternoon, that system is going to be on a weakening trend up into eastern Canada and Quebec. A secondary low, a little bit further south, is going to develop here into portions of northeast Texas. This is going to take a track a little bit further south and east into Indiana over Indianapolis by Saturday morning, and then really strengthening as it crosses through the Great Lakes down to a 993 millibar by Sunday afternoon as an Arctic high with cold air will be building in on the backside. 
the moisture advection from the Gulf it will be strong, especially with our second system developing further south and east. And I'll show you that here with the greens. Those are the dew points in the 50s and 60s. The browns, that's where we have dry air. And notice as we go into Thursday, we're going to see that cold front and warm front here, that collision course where we start to see a lot of lift out in the warm sector, dew points in the 50s and 60s. But Friday afternoon, that's where we're going to have a cold front and warm front combo south of the Ohio River to the Gulf Coast. So this could be a very big setup for severe weather, including tornadoes as we go into Friday. And you can see that. So here you can see better where the moisture and instability are going to overlap. It's mainly an overnight setup, which tells me that hail is going to be the most likely setup here for Oklahoma down into Northwest and West Texas from overnight to Wednesday, more so early Thursday morning. So really between midnight and 6 a.m. We're watching for mainly hail here. And then as we go into Thursday afternoon, the cold cold front is going to be in areas from the Ozarks down into East Texas, including the I-35 corridor, warm front all the way up here into central Illinois and Indiana, south of the warm front and ahead of the cold front. That here in the orange and yellow is where we're going to have the best overlap of moisture, instability, and wind shear available for severe weather here, including damaging winds, large hail, and a couple of isolated tornadoes. That's with our first low. And then as we go here in with our second low developing down here in Northeast Texas, this is going to have much better opportunity to produce severe weather because it's so close to the Gulf. You don't have as far to go with the moisture and instability and the wind shear to get that severe weather here this time of year in the Dixie Alley. So we're going to be watching out that and then looking at the jet stream again here. Look how far south the ripple in our jet stream is for Wednesday evening. It goes all the way down into northern Mexico and West Texas. That is going to ensure a lot of East Pacific, but also the southwestern at, uh, Gulf type of moisture getting up there again a hail setup and then we're going to see on thursday especially the potential for damaging winds but then friday could be more of a tornado setup there in the dixie alley with the left exit region of our jet stream moving across areas of louisiana into mississippi and alabama and middle and western tennessee going to be keeping an eye on that now let's look at that here on wednesday so wednesday during the day should be fairly quiet and then as we go well after dark these storms won't start popping up until after after midnight, so really into Thursday morning early, this is before daybreak from OKC, Lawton, Fort Sill, down into Wichita Falls and Abilene. That's where those hailstorms could start to develop. Yes, we could have gusty winds, and yes, we could have an isolated brief tornado with this, but overall, this overnight setup screams hail to me. And then as we go into Thursday afternoon and evening, this is going to be more of a hail and wind setup from areas south of the Ohio River down here into portions of the mid and lower Mississippi Valley. And then as we go into Friday, this is a Dixie Alley setup where we could have potentially some scattered tornadoes down there into Louisiana, the bayou there, and into portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and even North Georgia into Tennessee. We want to have a weather radio, especially there on Friday, and make sure it is programmed to your specific state, county, and city so you are aware of any warnings. And even on Saturday, we could have some strong storms over here in the Carolinas. I think North, South Carolina and Georgia, middle and Southern Georgia, Northern Florida could see that Saturday into Saturday evening. That's what we're watching. Now on the cold side, we're going to be seeing some snow here. So as we go to Thursday, there's the cold rain moving across Kansas and Missouri, including the Ozarks. And then we have a little thin stripe, narrow stripe of snow there in blue from Iowa up into Wisconsin. And then that second low is going to be much stronger and deeper. And that is going to pull in even colder air as we go into Saturday. So the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers playoff wild card game may be impacted by some snow. The rain snow line going to be very cold close to the Chicagoland area there at Soldier Field. So it could actually be impacting the game. And then strong winds as though tight isobars on the backside that could blow and drift around any snow that has accumulated. And by the way, look at this 1031, 1029 high pressure. That's an Arctic high on the backside. That's as we get into Sunday, January 11th. Looking here at the warm side, rain with severe weather, multiple rounds of thunderstorms, whether they're severe or not, will produce some heavy rainfall here south of the Ohio River to the Gulf Coast. And there are areas here from Tennessee, Kentucky, down into Mississippi, Louisiana, 
Alabama, Georgia there, and even into eastern Arkansas. That could see upwards of three inches worth of rain. So flash flooding will also be a hazard we need to keep an eye on. Then on the cold side, we showed you the two potential snowstorms with the second one being more potent. That could lay down a couple to a few inches of snow in the U.S. And then up into southeastern Canada, once that system really strengthens, Ontario and Quebec and even northern Maine we could be seeing several inches of snow in fact over a foot of snow in some areas in Ontario and Quebec even the UP of Michigan once we get into the weekend now the national blend of models looking here at yesterday's run it was starting to identify the corridor of snowfall the confidence has grown you can see the blue has kind of widened a little bit that means that the confidence is growing in a winter storm for this upcoming weekend from the central plains into the Midwest Great Lakes and South eastern Canada. In addition, a strong low pressure system or two of them that we're seeing will be producing some gustier winds here in the central and east. We could be seeing, especially in the Appalachians, higher elevations there, wind gusts over 70 miles an hour, but in the Ohio Valley, up into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, southeastern Canada, those wind gusts could be north of 30, even 40 miles per hour, very strong, and that could blow around some snow and reduce visibility for the weekend for travel, so make sure you're keeping tabs on that. Now let's look at our temperatures. True Arctic air up in Alaska and northwestern Canada. Mild Pacific air continuing across the central and eastern U.S. with a ridge of high pressure. That'll continue. In fact, we'll get even warmer as we go toward late in this week. In fact, we could be 50, 55 degrees above normal. Not only for the eastern U.S., but for southeast Canada. That could melt some of our snowpack in Ontario and Quebec early this week before we replenish some this weekend with that winter storm I showed you. But the cold air is going to be induced by... By that storm, that second one that comes through is going to make its own cold air. It's going to produce some cold air in the southeast. This is not Arctic air, but there are Arctic highs that are building on the backside. It does have some tie to the Arctic, but this is not true Arctic air in the southeastern U.S., if that makes sense. Now, looking here at the true Arctic air, look at this, folks. As we go through the week... Our wind chills up in Alaska, northern Canada, Greenland, going to be very cold. In fact, I wanted to show you this. Once we get to Sunday morning, look at our wind chills. 92 below zero in central Greenland. Of course, yes, this is in the higher elevations where most people obviously don't live. But just to show you how cold that is, that is insanely cold there in Greenland, to say the very least. Now, as we go into next week, okay, this is the 12th through the 19th. This is a wintry look. I don't care what you say about it. It's a wintry look. You get a ridge of high pressure there in northeast Pacific, spiking up to Alaska and western Canada. Yes, this may start to melt some of the snow that we've seen uh, all year long, really, in British Columbia. Low pressure trough and blue here into eastern Canada and the eastern United States will promise colder temperatures. And we have to wait, though, a little bit for our cold air source to get back. Just because that 500 millibars, we are seeing, you know, the trough come back doesn't automatically mean that like the arctic air is right here it's you know it's ready to go we have to wait for the polar vortex and i think here as we go into the third especially fourth week of january look at the lobe of the polar vortex this is the coldest lobe and it's going to make its way back across the planet from russia and scandinavia over here into north america and over hudson bay for the coldest air this is our cold air source as we go into the third and fourth week of january so watch and learn everybody watch this look at as we start next week yeah it's really warm out there i get it well here's a cold shot of air in the east this is around the 15th 16th and then we see a little bit mild trend and then it's sustainable right we have cold air that just remains sustained and the longer it's here the colder it gets because we're laying down snow in this pattern so that means it's gonna kind of get a little bit colder the snowpack's gonna and only enhance that colder air and with this graphic, you can see exactly where the heavy snowpack on the ground is. Look at southern Canada. That's where our heaviest snow is going to be. Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, northern Maine. That is where our heavy snowpack is on the ground by the 21st of January, which is week three. Also, by week three, this is where the snow track will be. The Ohio Valley, Great Lakes continue to see that. The Northeast, including, yes, guess what? The I-95 corridor could get some snowfall in this. And if you're in eastern tropical Canada, it's not going to feel so tropical. Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, we could potentially be seeing some heavy snow over there as well to end the month of January. So a lot going on. We'll continue to track it here. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Folks, we are literally 500 subscribers from 144,000. 
you want to help me get there, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, we cover Canada, the United States, and North America in general. So like, share, and subscribe. Hype the video. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. You want to follow me on Facebook for more weather information. The link for that is in the description down below the video, also pinned to the top of the comment section down below the video. That's enough talking. That's enough weather I have for you this evening. Thanks for watching, and I'll be here for another weather forecast tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening, folks.